Hello friends and welcome back to my channel or welcome if you are new. My name is Erin and today is book review Friday and today we are talking about Baby Teeth by Zoya Stage which I am very excited to talk about. I have seen so many people talking about this book. It's all over Instagram. It's all over Goodreads. I've seen so much hype about this book and I knew that I had to read it and I had to see what it was all about because I just I just wanted to know. So let's talk about the cover like always. I really like the cover. I liked the smashed candy. I don't know. I just like the way it looks. It looks ominous in my opinion. It suits the book. I can tell that it's gonna be something jagged and cracked I guess if that makes any sense. I don't know. To me that's what it looks like. It just symbolizes the the cracked and jagged family that we will be talking about today. Enough about that, let's get into the synopsis and I will tell you a little bit about the book and then I will give you guys my thoughts. Hannah is a very odd, mute, seven-year-old girl. She has never spoken and her parents don't know if she ever will. They really can't distinguish if she can't speak or she won't speak. Suzette is her mother and she suffers from Crohn's disease so she is a stay-at-home mom because working is too hard with her condition and Alex who is Hannah's dad he's an architect and he makes really good money so she's able to be a stay-at-home mom and they can still live very comfortably. Suzette has been getting tests done on Hannah because she's trying to figure out if there's anything physically wrong with Hannah that's preventing her from speaking. Hannah's tests all come back negative though. There's nothing physically wrong with her that's preventing her from speaking. However, Hannah's speech or lack thereof isn't their only problem. When Hannah's dad Alex is around, Hannah is a sweet, innocent, polite, cute, normal little girl. But when Hannah is alone with her mom all day, she exudes hatred. Hannah's also been kicked out of every school they enroll her in, hence why her mother homeschools her. Her behavior starts out as tantrums, slight bursts of violence, and making noises. She likes barking and snarling like a dog. Then one day, Hannah speaks to her mother for the first time, and this is when things start getting out of control. Okay, that's all I'm going to say about the plot. I just wanted to give you a little toe dip, a little, you know, a little try on, see if you like it. So, my thoughts. First off, uh, I'm glad I don't have children. I'm glad I'm not planning on having any children anytime soon or ever. Um, yeah, this book really makes you not want to have kids. <laughs> I can't imagine what it's like to read this book if you actually have children, but uh, yeah, it doesn't make me want kids. I can tell you that. It's a very good form of birth control for me. If you can't tell by the sound of it, it's very reminiscent of movies like The Omen or The Good Son where there is an evil murderous child and they need to be stopped. This book is one of those books where no one believes the main character and in this case no one equals her husband Alex. Suzette tells Alex all the stuff Hannah does during the day to her and Alex just really brushes it off as Hannah not being able to talk, she doesn't know how to communicate properly, she just is different, she's special. And it's very frustrating, probably because they're supposed to be a married couple, like they are husband and wife, and I get that he puts his daughter first, which is great because you should love your kids, but... Uh, they, <sighs> It's annoying because he never sees it, and when he does see it, he just doesn't want to believe it. When she gets kicked out of all the schools, he blames the schools. He doesn't blame Hannah. He doesn't think there's something wrong with Hannah. He thinks there's something wrong with the schools. And yeah, okay, you could say that from the first school, but when it happens more than once, don't you think that's like a red flag, sir? Like, don't you want to think about things a little bit more? He just was a frustrating character in all. Actually, all of them are very frustrating characters. Suzette, you can tell she doesn't 
really want to be a mom, which is fine. Some women don't want to be moms, but she, you can tell she's just kind of like, it's more of a nuisance to be a mom than it was when she wasn't a mom. And I think Hannah's behavior really doesn't help her want to be a mom. She's just kind of like, I don't want you as my kid pretty much. And her parenting style is interesting. I'm sure a lot of people have something to say about that because everyone likes to say what the best parenting style is, but her parenting style is definitely, definitely interesting. Hannah's irritating because she's a little demon child. She's awful. She's so obnoxious. I mean, you'll find that out if you read the book. And then Alex is annoying because he's a stupid husband. He just doesn't do anything. He's so busy with work that when he comes home and she tells him stuff, he's just like, oh, Hannah can't do that. Hannah's my little angel. It's like, get a clue, sir. Get a clue. One thing that annoyed me slightly is some of the things that Hannah does in the book are very extreme and very crazy for a seven-year-old. I feel like it's just very unrealistic for a seven-year-old to do some of the things that she did. I know she's supposed to be a, a genius and all that kind of stuff, but <laughs> she's seven. I don't know, it was just a little over the top and extreme, and I get that that's the point. It's supposed to be the most extreme scenario. That's the point of this book, I get it. But it takes that realism away, and it kind of pulls you out of the book a little bit, or at least it did for me. I love realistic horror. When it's more realistic, it scares me more. So it just slightly took that away from me, just because I knew that it was unrealistic. This book is written similarly to Gone Girl. If you've read Gone Girl, I personally didn't like Gone Girl, which I know is a huge, oh my god, everyone loved Gone Girl. I didn't, I didn't understand. It's written similarly because one chapter is Suzette's perspective and the next chapter is Hannah's perspective. So it alternates between the two so you get both of their perspectives of the same situation. Even with all that, I really did like the book. I thought it was fun. I thought it was a good plot. It was an interesting book to read. I especially liked the second half better than the first half just because the husband finally gets his act together a little bit and it's it's easier to read when they're a duo versus when they were both separate and Hannah was playing them both, if that makes any sense. So the second half was better in my opinion just because Alex kind of manned up and got his act together, which I appreciated finally. The ending was slightly predictable in my opinion just because I feel like there are only really two endings for an evil child storyline like this. So I figured it was one of the two and when it turned out to be what it was, I wasn't that surprised or shocked. It didn't surprise me or anything like that. It was pretty typical for this kind of storyline. Overall, I'm really glad I did read the book. I thought it was fun. I did enjoy it. It was a good book. It was well written. It was a fun plot. I liked it. It wasn't bad. I do think a lot of people won't like the book and when you go on Goodreads, the opinion is very much split on this book. I personally liked it. I know some people will have their differing opinions, which is fine. That's how reading goes. So I think if you like storylines similar to The Omen or The Good Son or um, we need to talk about Kevin, uh, I haven't seen that, but I've heard people really liked that. It seems similar to that as well. So if you like those kinds of movies, I feel like this book would probably be right up your alley. And I do recommend it. I thought it was fun. I liked it. It was a good plot. Like I said, I enjoyed it. I don't think it's anything mind-blowing or new or unique or anything like that, but it is a fun and good book to read. So with that, I'm going to go. This is the end of the review. If you guys enjoyed, please give me a thumbs up. It lets me know what kind of content you are enjoying on my channel. Feel free to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. We can become friends and talk about makeup and horror and all kinds of other things and it'll be lots of fun. And I will see you guys in my next video. Bye!